Today we're driving the 2022 Lexus GX460 Blackline. Now this is a new trim for 2022. We just drove a GX460 Luxury a couple weeks ago. That had a price tag of close to $70,000. This is around 62 grand as tested, so much more reasonable price. We have a few different features than we did in the Luxury. This has the standard suspension. I haven't driven a lot of Lexus GX 460s without the air suspension, without the adaptive dampers. This has coil springs at all four corners and just standard dampers. It actually rides really nice. We do not have a Mark Levinson sound system. Honestly, I don't really miss it. This is, it sounds pretty good. Played through Spotify, played through Sirius XM satellite radio. It sounds pretty similar to the ML unit. And the big news for 2022 is we have a touch screen with, look at it, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. You can kind of switch between this touch pad down here and the touch screen display. It works great. You have a nice high res view, nice and close to the road too. So you don't have to take your eyes off too much. Um, I really like this new infotainment for 2022. This is a really big improvement. They've moved around some of the buttons in this center stack. Uh, downhill assist control and four wheel drive for high, for low is moved up here instead of down here where the touch pad is now. We get heated and ventilated seats, a couple USB ports, a cigarette lighter port down there, a pretty crappy reverse camera still. That is definitely a downgrade from the previous GX. But otherwise, we're not lacking too much in this black line trim. We even get a heated steering wheel and headlamp washers, which is pretty exciting. I think if I were gonna get another GX, which I may someday, uh, this would be exactly what I would go for. This is a fantastic spec. Let's show you what it looks like on the outside. Ooh, yeah, look at those roof rails. 18 inch wheels, which actually look pretty good on this. We have two 65, 60 R18 tires. These are black line specific wheels. Blacked out headlights, slightly different grill surround, kind of a dark smoked chrome. Nice looking GX. 4.6 liter V8, 301 horsepower, 329 pound-feet of torque. That's made it to a six-speed automatic transmission with full-time four-wheel drive. We get these dark red taillights, which look fantastic. Swing-out tailgate, 6,500 pound towing capacity. One difference between this and the luxury is that we do not have power-operated third-row seats. They just manually are operated right there. And uh, I don't know how, they, how the bottoms pop out, but the third row in mean, the GX has never been that useful. It's just kind of something to use in a pinch. I had a 2012 Lexus GX460 for three years, about 30,000 miles. Loved every minute of it. Ended up selling it for my 4Runner. Looking at this makes me want to go back to a GX. <laughs> this is really nice. We have a have a faux leather vinyl material on these seats. Actually feels pretty nice. These fold nice and flat. We have grab handles at all four doors for passengers to get in and out. Pretty nice spacious back seat area, rear climate control, two USB ports down there, an armrest. Ooh, look at that. That's old school. <laughs> and black headliner. A lot of people will appreciate that. The black line, I believe, is the only GX that comes with black headliner. I know it does get scuffed up pretty easily, so that is a positive for this truck. Let's take a look under the hood at this legendary 4.6 liter V8. Eh, you'll average about 15 to 17 miles to the gallon in these. They're not the most efficient, but they're bulletproof reliable, overbuilt, understressed, belt-driven fan, 0W20 oil. Listen to that. It's just silky, silky smooth. What a wonderful engine. Sounds good too. And one of the last V8s in an off-road luxury-oriented SUV. Let's take a look at these roof rails and then we'll hop in and go for a drive. It's nice to see these on a GX the roof mounting system has never been very ideal from the factory in the GX, and this adds a pretty useful element. They don't make a lot of noise on the highway either, which is good. 
two memory seating settings. Of course, this is a hugely capable body on frame SUV. You can outfit these with crawl control, with uh, various different drive mode settings. Uh, you can do that after the fact, or some. I think some GXs do have an off-road package in the US. This does not have that. Um, but we have a very off-road capable SUV with KDSS, uh, A-Track, four low. I mean, this is a very, very capable chassis. And you get a little bit more approach and departure angle in this black line than you do in the luxury, which has a lower front valence. I think overall, this black line trim has just about everything you need. And it's kind of the sweet spot. They did a really nice job putting this together and uh, packaging this new black line for the 22 model year. If I were getting a new GX, I would consider this as my top pick. All right, let's take this for a drive. We have an interesting steering wheel on this GX. It looks like it's all leather, but it's kind of a plastic faux wood grain at the top. It's kind of rubberized. It's nice and grippy, I like it, but definitely something different. I haven't seen this on a GX before. So I don't know how many GX videos we've filmed on the channel. It's been dozens probably at this point, but I've gotta say, this is the best riding GX uh, available. The luxury is nice and that height control at the rear is useful for towing and maybe a little bit of off-roading, but the ride in this is so much better controlled. It's so much smoother, it's less bouncy. It really feels good and it still handles great. This feels a little bit lighter, a little bit more nimble. We actually have a pretty nice handling SUV in this GX460. There's a 3070 power distribution to this four wheel drive system. So it's actually pretty rear biased on throttle. You can lock the center differential and that'll be a 50-50 split for off-road driving do have some manual control with these gears. But at the limit, this is actually a pretty neutral chassis. It feels really good. I don't think there's actually that much of a curb weight difference between this GX and the luxury with a different suspension and a few more features. They both weigh about 5,300 pounds, but for some reason, this just feels a little bit nimbler and a little bit lighter to the touch, which I actually really like. You can kind of chuck this thing around, surprisingly. We have hydraulic power steering, which provides pretty good feel for an SUV. And the six-speed auto doesn't need a shift all the time because it just has six speeds. I have great visibility, really nice greenhouse looking out of this GX. All around me, even my rear three-quarter view is pretty open. This is our bumpy road test right here, pretty rough section of pavement this just steamrolls over everything. It stays very well composed. Rough pavement, back roads, some light off-roading. You're pretty much only limited by ground clearance and approach and departure angle on these GXs. You throw a lift kit on them and they become incredibly capable. And that is another thing about this is that in recent years, the aftermarket for these GX460s has just exploded. There's a Facebook group called GXOR, and the number of members has increased exponentially since I bought my GX in 20, I think it was 2018, 2017. This is basically the Land Cruiser Prado everywhere else in the, in the world, but it's made a little bit fancier and a little bit nicer from Lexus. It's still built in Japan. I don't know what the future holds for the GX, whether it's going to be a turbocharged four-cylinder or a V6, but it won't be as simple 
and pure of a driving experience as what this offers, that's for sure. <laughs> the tires are a little bit noisy, but they offer pretty good grip. And you can turn traction and stability control completely off in this thing and have some fun in the winter. This will drift around in the snow or on a dirty back road. Pretty fun to hustle, if I'm being honest. On the highway, we have some new safety features and some new driving assistance systems. We have adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, which is just kind of a lane keep assist system. It doesn't really do any steering. We still have hydraulic power steering in this GX after all. But at speed, it's pretty quiet. <laughs> we don't even get a European style turn signal. You have to hold the stock for however many uh, turn indications you want. <laughs> The adaptive cruise control works okay. I believe it will work until 36 miles per hour or so. So below that speed, it'll beep, it'll shut off, and you'll have to do all your braking yourself. A nice system to have, but again, still kind of makes and, and dates this car, makes it feel a little bit more old school. I'm very impressed with the ride quality on this standard suspension. It is just about perfect. It's a really nice ride handling balance for an SUV this size. Not as floaty and all over the place as the Forerunner TRD Pro. It's well composed, but it's not overly stiff like it is in the luxury with the adaptive suspension and air, air springs. Steering feel is nice too. I mean, I, I can just kind of chuck this thing around. It has a lightness to it that's really, really very appealing. There's something about these GX460s that they just feel like they could kind of tackle anything. There's a solidity here that is lacking in a lot of newer SUVs. There's no shakes, no rattles. This just feels so solid. Lexus has made some subtle improvements to the GX over the years too. And it's just small things, little things that add up over time. NVH, noise, vibration, harshness in this 460 is a lot better than it was in my 2012 GX. It's just quieter, it's a more smooth and enjoyable and luxurious experience driving down the road in these new GXs. They've tuned the throttle a little bit better, it's a little more linear, less touchy off the line. Brake pedal feel is improved too. Little things that add up, small tweaks, They've actually added usable cup holders now <laughs> compared to when the GX first came out. Traction control system seems a little bit less intrusive too. I don't know if they've made too many changes to that, but pushing at the limit on some of those uh, corners back there didn't seem to kick in as much as it usually does. This new steering wheel is growing on me a little bit too. It feels a little bit more, a little bit sportier than the four spoke wheel that we used to have with the GX. Driving position in this is fantastic. My door panel isn't so high that I can't rest my arm on the wheel comfortably. This feels very nice. These armrests are adjustable. I'm very comfortable in these seats. Did a lot of long road trips in my GX460 and I found it to be an incredibly comfortable car on long journeys. You can even eke out 20, 21 miles to the gallon on the highway in these things too. If you're, keep your speed at a reasonable rate. You get some neat little features like the sunglass holder and mirror that shows you your backseat passengers. You can spy on the kids or anyone in the back <laughs> pretty easily. All right, guys. Well, there's the GX460 black line. Um, I think let's do a quick walk around of this and then we'll wrap up this video with a sound system test. Again, we haven't really tested the non-Mark Levinson unit in these and uh, I'd be interested to give you guys a little bit of a comparison. So anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this one. 
I really, really like this GX. This is this really speaks to me. It's easy to lift because you don't have to deal with the air suspension or adaptive dampers. Uh, this would be the one that I would recommend if you want to use a GX for more rugged off-roady things, or you just want a nice daily driver. Really, the only negative to these 460s is their fuel economy. They do require premium fuel, though they'll run okay on regular. Uh, you just won't get the extra power, and um, yeah probably recommended to stick with premium so that is an expense that's gonna last the lifetime of the vehicle but factor all that in the driving experience just the nature of these cars the way they feel on the road i think it's a worthy concession and um, this is my favorite gx that i've driven to date i think this is just a great new spec a new package from lexus um, would highly recommend one if you can get your hands on one these days all right Let's hop in, we'll do a sound system test, and uh, that'll probably wrap up this video. This black line also comes in a green that is just gorgeous. I don't know the name of it, but it's a beautiful color. You've probably seen some pictures of it online. In black, though, this looks pretty sharp, too. I like that this is actually a touch screen, too. That's pretty useful. base model sound system is still very, very nice. Like I said, I do not miss the Mark Levinson unit. I can barely tell the difference, if I'm being honest, with most listening scenarios, especially when you're streaming satellite radio or Spotify from your phone, um, and you're not using very high quality source material. I can't really tell the difference. So anyway, you're not missing out on much there. Big fan of this GX. I want one again. Dang it, I shouldn't have driven this. It's gonna be an expensive test drive someday. Don't know if I'd go out and get a new one for 60 grand, but in a couple years, maybe finding a used example, that would be mighty tempting. All right, well, anyway, until then, that's the end of this. Uh, thanks for watching. Super glad to be able to get a chance behind the wheel of this black line. I'm glad I drove this because uh, I do really like it a lot more than the luxury trim. Anyway, that's it for this one. We'll see you guys later. Take care.